It is Ocean Breeze 0225 back here with a video. Yes, a video. Today we will be taking a review slash look at the Tier 7 campaign ship for the June update of 2021, the USS Georgia. Um, disclaimer, this build optimizes everything about what I like the Georgia, and certain stats might be inflated. We shall start with my upgrades. Currently have AA Guns Mod 2 for the past the aircraft carriers. Propulsions Mod, probably going to steering gears like very soon as I'm trying out a different build. Um, obviously Target Acquisition Mod 1 is the only one. And Plotting Room Mod 2. Um, a lot of people say that the Main Battery Mod 3 is the way to go. Um, I have not tried it, so if you try it, that's at your own risk, but uh, Plotting Room works fine for me. But, I mean, shooting more, uh, like, shooting more shells per minute is probably better for this ship since you have less guns. Um, so, um, either of these two works. I go with artillery plotting room. Loadout. You have a quick reloading repair party, which is just insane 38 seconds, which is really, really nice. Um, you get the American damage control as well. Uh, I currently have the spotter plane equipped, and you also get engine boost. Nice. Um, we're going to take out a booster here to make sure that you guys get the right stats here. So hit points, 65,520 hit points. Um, I think you can get the Georgia up to like 66,000 hit points with a maxed Willisley, probably a bit more. But my Willisley is not quite maxed, he's just a level 16 legendary too. Um, artillery, you have about... 18.6 or sorry you have 17.2 kilometers of firing range i have 19.1 due to other factors in my commander so your base range is 17.2 kilometers you get an extra 1.1 kilometer range on the base iowa um so all of these stats are based on the build i'm running currently so your HE shell damage base is 6450 with a 43% chance to set fire. Nothing insane like Conqueror, but it's not that bad, especially considering you have 457s. And your AP max shell damage, this is also base, is 15,750, which is insane. Your AA defense is a cool 99 points, very nice. Maneuverability, max speed is 33 knots base, turning circle radius of 890, and a rudder shift of 17.3, which is not at all bad. Concealment is, uh, is lackluster at 14.8, it's not the greatest, it's not the worst. Uh, detectability by air is 12.4, eh, it's not the greatest. Your smoke fire penalty is just garbage because you have 18-inch uh, guns. Uh, now we'll look at the armor viewer. So, four end plating, you get 32 millimeters on each side, which is only overmatched by Yamato's 460 millimeter guns. Not even the Georgia can overmatch anything. Uh, not even the Georgia can overmatch 32 millimeters of armor. Side plating, solid, 38 millimeters. Um, I believe if you angle correctly, that can bounce Yamato shells. So that's cool. Superstructure armor, it's the American superstructure. It's humongous right here. It's, it's, I never noticed how big it is, but Georgia's superstructure is so big. It's it's an Iowa hull, so it's got to be big. Casemate armor, pretty good, pretty good. It's not bad. Uh, your your guns are uh, they're okay. They're not the most well armored part of the ship, but it's it's okay. Good enough to get by. Although with this new turret glitch, it's really annoying because like. The guns take up so much of your bow since it's a slightly skinnier Iowa. Due to less guns, the Georgia could be skinnier and faster than Iowa. Um, this turret glitch does not really help the Georgia at all. So if you're getting nuked by the front, it's actually not the armor. It's it's more so the turret glitch, which is, if you guys are not familiar with that, it is the fact that normally your turrets are considered as extremities to your ship, so they take separate damage. But because of the introduction of AP bombs, there's been a miscalculation, probably with the game, where if you take full pins in the turret, it will actually deal hull points instead of damage to just the turrets. So, it's a really unfortunate glitch. 
And, um, well, your citadel is, uh, just at the waterline, maybe slightly below it, but you see a glaring weakness. This ship really suffers from plunging fire. 25 millimeters of armor underneath the forward main battery. So, at max range, you could technically get citadeled by Yamato, considering you, uh, since your deck armor just above it is, I don't think it's good enough to block Yamato shells? I'm not quite sure really how the armor system works, but I don't believe so. So Yamato could technically Citadel you uh, with Raining Fire. Um, the one thing I will say though, it is decently HE resistant with a 38mm deck. Actually, never mind. Yamato cannot overmatch that. Sorry, guys. Yamato cannot overmatch a 38mm deck. In fact, HE as well cannot... Uh, a lot of HE will shatter, so you're actually your deck is actually pretty HE resistant on Georgia, which is a good thing. And the overview: above average maximum movement speed, big guns, and above average reload. Um, all of these are very true. Um, its reload is actually solid 26 seconds for 18-inch guns. Its dispersion is good for only six guns, and 18-inch guns dispersion is good. 18 inch guns are of course one of the biggest was the biggest caliber you can get in this game behind Yamato that's at the moment we'll wait until Shikishima comes but <laughs> and above average maximum movement speed a high-speed battleship project which preceded Iowa class ships the main battery comprised of 457 millimeter guns if you guys are not familiar with 457 millimeter guns um, those are the same guns found on Thunderer on the PC. Guns placed in twin turrets, which are developed alongside the project of the ship herself in 1938. Year of design was 1938. Georgia was never built. She is a prototype, but it's a very solid ship in Legends. One of my favorites behind Prince Idol Friedrich. Yes, Prince Idol Friedrich is actually my favorite battleship in the game, oddly enough. Um, but that's pretty much it. This is the build I'm currently running with her. I have a William Sims level 16 legendary rank 2. Flammable cannoneer for the main slot. Um, any of these three abilities are okay, but obviously if you're going to run a sniper build, you should probably run flammable cannoneer. I have scissors. Yes, I have scissors. You're hearing that right. I have scissors. Now, the reason why is I want to take max, like, I want to use... The George's speed to my advantage. Gyrating Gobits is good for the rest of the line because, you know, they're not speed demons, right? Colorado, I think the fastest you can get it is like 22 knots. So it doesn't really hurt to get extra damage to decrease the speed. Now, Georgia is a ship you want to be playing in full speed, um, which is, I find, the way to play it. But you want to be smart enough to play that because, um, well, sometimes you just got to pay attention when you're playing Georgia. Um, increase main battery shell grouping for any ship type, but reduce their rudder shift speed, which is marksmanship. Marksmanship, yes. Um, I mean, obviously you gotta run this for the dispersion. No doubt about that. And reaching out XXL, I suppose emergency specialist is fine. And of course, will to rebuild. Inspirations are Andrew Cunningham and Robert Jujard. Um... I would probably run AL Sean Horse if I had that, but Robert is a fine inspiration if you don't have AL Sean Horse. Honestly, Robert Jujard is probably a better dis a better uh, inspiration for the American line, in my opinion, as I have ran Robert Jujard throughout my entire American line, and it works perfectly for me. And uh, that's pretty much it. This is uh, the little. This is a little thing. This is uh, this is what I do with the Georgia, my build and all that. Um, and now we'll get into the gameplay. Um, before we get into the gameplay, this is my opinion on the ship. I think it's a great ship. I think it was a great campaign ship. And um, even though I don't think it's as good as the Iowa, I still think it's really good, honestly. I still think it's a solid ship. Um, I mean, obviously, it's good enough for me to like the ship, so that's something. I forgot about Massachusetts. I also like that. But anyway, that's enough about the rest of the American line. We are talking about Georgia. So... We shall hop in to the gameplay now. Hello guys. 
It is Ocean again. We are back from our port review of Georgia. And we are here for gameplay review. Now, I will kind of warn you that it isn't the, well, cleanest game. Unfortunately, the blue team throws harder than the red team today. And we come on the loss. But this is my best game I've had in Georgia so far. And this was even considering I was AFK for 15 seconds because I had to go run downstairs and open the front door. Because I received a package that, um, well, is, uh, or I had to receive a package for someone in our household. But anyway, this is the Tier 7 Georgia. And, well, I like this ship a lot. I, I really enjoy this ship. Um, I will say that for some reason, out of all the battleships I have in my port, the Georgia seems to suffer from the turret glitch the most which I mentioned in the uh, first part of the video which was my port review um, the Georgia seems to suffer from the turret glitch the most out of all the battleships that I've played this update which is uh, it's, it's kind of annoying but it works both ways because you can nuke other people and then other people can nuke you it's it's just a weird thing and I think wargaming needs to fix that um, if they don't it's it's going to be a really annoying problem, especially because you can't really do much about it because you can't angle, you can't angle your guns to take less damage. Uh, you can angle your ship, but you can't angle your guns. So, um, you know, there's it's just things like that. But anyway, here we are spawned in between A and B here, and we're taking a somewhat of a defensive position, and we're looking to the right of us, and uh, uh, the Shapiev is implementing a new tactic apparently which people reverse now um i will also say another thing my aim with the georgia is getting better from this game because you'll notice my aim in this ship was kind of wonky this is because it has a very unique shell travel time it travels faster than massachusetts and north carolina shells but not as fast as iowa shells it's it's a weird thing so I it's, I've been trying to get used to it this was actually my second match in the ship and uh, it was actually a really really good match here um see like I think we missed the shot on the Vlad there I think this is one yeah I think we missed the shot there yeah I think we missed the shot I, I think we missed the shot or we just don't get RNG something like that I, I think we missed the shot yeah, see, we get the rear end there. Probably could have death struck him if we aimed a little bit forward, but that's okay. We're, we're getting used to the shell travel time with this. Um, I was able to delete another Georgia with this ship, so I'm getting a lot better with the shell aiming right now. Um, dispersion on this ship is, is okay, as you can see. It's, it's not the greatest, it's not the worst. Um, for being 18 inch guns and only having six of them, it's actually a really solid ship. I thought the, you know, the less shells you have available, the harder it is to do damage. Um, that's actually not true at all. So, I think the George is a solid ship. Um, I think this is when the Vlad just decides to back up, I think. I, again, I'm not quite sure. It's been like a, a week since I played this match, but... So I'm just trying to talk while I'm watching my gameplay here. But basically this Georgia plays like a kiting cruiser sometimes. Maybe sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you can stand and hold your ground. Um, it just depends. It's a very flexible ship. That's the word. It's a very flexible ship here. Our Shapiev wants us to turn around. I guess that's why he went rear end into the battle. I, I, I got no idea. For, the, for you cruiser players, is that a new tactic where you just go backwards into the battle? Um, I, I, I have no clue. I don't play cruisers. I just play the Munchen and American cruisers, which are not really cruisers, if you know what I mean. Like, I don't play no French or German cruisers, so I wouldn't know. So you guys, so you cruiser players, let me know if, uh, if that's a thing where you just go rear end into a battle. But I've never seen that before. Um, so now we're just kind of pushing. I mean, like, I don't know what prevented us from ever going to the A cap, but whatever did is really going to haunt us. I think it's that destroyer and the fact that our shop, yeah, I've never wanted to push the destroyer. The fact, besides, you know, he has radar, so I have no clue why he wanted to do, why he didn't want to push the destroyer. But, um, we end up going this way towards, uh, the left flank. Um, we end up missing this Colorado, which probably would have dealt a lot of damage to him there. So I, I remember some of this match here. 
And we just never get RNG on this Amagi. Uh, like, I mean never. Um, our RNG this match was, was really crap until we get to a certain point of the game, which I'll show you guys. But um, it was just a little bit unfortunate because it was too late there. We, we That was just probably bad aiming, but... Here we try and utilize the smoke screen. This is I utilize the smoke screen because this is the point I was AFK, and I'm lucky I didn't get nuked at all. Um, watching this over again, this is all new, so I have no idea what happened, what's happening in this part of the match. So, because I was downstairs opening the door, and I was trying to get back up here as fast as I could. Uh, maybe, maybe this uh, these extra salvos were the difference between losing and winning. Because if I was able to kill one more ship faster we we probably could have won the match at the end but see i'm finally back here from our endeavors downstairs and shapiev is still telling us to retreat now this is this is the part where these heals really just shell themselves up i take a lot of damage in this engagement here as i figured i i just realized after coming back from downstairs that i'm in a really crappy position and i need to get out of here as fast as i can um so I'm just trying to run away here and take as little damage as I can. I think I ended up just taking a massive salvo from Amagi right now. And unfortunately, our good dispersion is just wasted on bad aim or not good RNG. Oh, there we go. Now we get a Citadel. There we go. That's a nice Citadel on Amagi. So there's our RNG luck now. Um, but unfortunately, there's just too many HG spammers on this side of the map. I wasn't able to stay here long enough. And Amagi just nukes us right now. Or maybe he doesn't. I guess he doesn't nuke us. So I think we were able to kill Amagi with this salvo. Um, so yeah, now that Amagi's dead, we can go ahead and push back to where we wanted to go. Um, but I feel like I just kick it in reverse and then I just use my engine boost to get away somehow. But here I'm trying to nuke the Synop, but uh, my aim was off by a lot on this sin up um see we just snuck the shells over and you know actually we do get a sit up man i i should honestly just watch the match before i talk huh because i'm just talking out my ass right now anyway we're gonna ignore the fact that i'm getting basically everything wrong except the fact that there is a lot of he spammers and at this point i realize that i have to get out of here because there is a lot of HE spammers that are going to do a lot of damage to me. So I get out of here. Synop dies. Goodbye. 80, 81,000 damage so far. Not bad. Not bad at all. This is without using any of our engine boosts quite yet. Um, as you see that our team is just... Our team never... Just never thought of pushing this Algerie. And it ends up hurting me because... Well, the Algerie ends up killing me at the end of the match. Because he gets a fire when he when I really wish he didn't, and the fire ended up being the death of me. Spoiler alert. But I think the Georgia is a great ship. Um, it's not as good as the Massachusetts is, um, as far as, like, to newer players. Like, if you're a newer player and you just wailed all the money on this ship, I think it's a good enough ship, but you may struggle a little bit. Just because of this turret glitch, that's not really helping you either. <laughs> if you're a newer tier 7 player, those turret glitches are super annoying. So, And of course, a double fire here. We burn a heal to try and negate as much damage as we can to get our damage gone back. Because, um, well, this is this is really painful right now. As we're trying to get out of range of this Algerie in Cleveland, I believe. It's, a, it's, it's like the worst. Those are like the two worst HG spammers. Um, if it was a Charles Martel, that would be super scary. And you see there, the heal did a really good job as negating fire damage. I don't think I end up down. I do end up damage conning that, but that I think this is when I start making mistakes towards my death. I don't think I realized I have no heals left, so I damage con one fire, which is probably a mistake. I only had 30 seconds left with that. Probably should have just let the fire burn. Because now we're getting into an engagement with an Ochakov. And as any battleship will, player will tell you, it's uh, it's not uh, an engagement you're looking forward to. Um, luckily, we drop spot here. We use our engine boost to try and get out of the Alger in Cleveland's area here. And try and see if we can do a flanking maneuver on the Massachusetts here. It's, it's a four against... Um, 
So four against five here, so or six, sorry. It's not looking too good. But you know, we're gonna we're gonna try our best here. Um, as I angle away towards the HE spammers, this is when I find out the Ochikov is actually right there, and this is uh, this is when my poor decision makings just reach a climax here. Ochikov decides to push me an angle, which um, if you're an HE spammer and a cruiser that that likes range, which are pretty much entire Russian line that likes range. Um, there you see just the double fires. You just see the fires hammering me right now. I'm just making sure the Massachusetts doesn't nuke me. I'm trying to help my team by getting rid of this Ochakov. But this Ochakov's grave mistake was he just continued to push me. Uh, I don't think he knew that I reloaded so fast that I thought he maybe he thought he could kill me or not. But then he just gives up on angling and he's gone. Um, Ochakov just uh, he just keep sailing in a straight angled line he's like well I bounced the last salvo uh, that is not exactly what happened there then I'm trying to get my Miyoko to retreat but Miyoko's like nah bro I got this but uh, Miyoko is definitely not doing what I want him to do he's doing it at the wrong time I wanted him to push the Algerie and all of them a while ago but he's doing it at like the at the most wrong time so a little bit unfortunate there and now we're over 100k damage right now, trying to carry our team with 13k HP and will to rebuild, which saves lives. Uh, will to rebuild really does save lives here. Um, I don't believe we get a Citadel on Algeria here. If we do get a Citadel, I'm just going to smash my remote. There we go. Two overpants there. Um, also, I can't wait to record the Munchen video. Um, the Munchen video will be coming out roughly two hours after this video. Also, sorry for the long videos. I hope you guys are not bored of my voice or anything. Uh, you guys are probably you guys probably are bored of my voice, but that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's why you subscribe to my channel to hear my beautiful voice talk to you guys about game mechanics that I don't. I'm not even quite sure how they work myself. But but you know, it's all good. And if you're not subscribed and you've made it this far in the video, you should might as well you might as well subscribe. I stream a lot. I do reviews very, very, very often, but I'm going to try and do more videos, as that's what I said my bio is. I like to make sure you guys don't waste money on the game, because I have wasted a lot of money myself on the game, so. I want to make sure you guys don't waste money on this game, and make sure you guys know what you're getting, because Wargaming can be very, very deceptive in their marketing tactics, so I'm going to make sure that you guys are not deceptive. Or not, you know, tricked by wargaming in any way. So I will make sure you guys understand the full bulk of what's going on. Here we get the high caliber. Absolutely raking right now. Doing awesome amounts of damage right now. As we're just pounding away at this Massachusetts. And unfortunately our aim is just not good. Helena joins the fray. And uh, with a damage con being down for a minute. And will to rebuild has now left me. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty much over. Nothing much I can do about this. I do I do believe we end up killing the Vlad. The Vlad that should have died at the beginning of the match. Yes, we do kill the Vlad. I remember it. Because my team then proceeds to yoink my Kraken. So Vlad is dead with one penetration at their front end. And here we try to kill the Massachusetts for our Kraken unleashed. Uh, but the Helena decides to get a fire on us. Our team... Does a mild bit of damage to Massachusetts, and we're just not able to kill him. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys for riding the waves with Ocean Breezer.